Hey guys, it's Claire and here's what I read in January. The first book I read was The Gay Best Friend by, I'm gonna butcher his last name, Nicholas DiDemizio. It is about this guy whose two best friends are getting married and because he's gay, he's like the one in the middle. Like he can't be one of the guys, but he's also not one of the girls. And so, and we have a dent in one of my pages, which I don't like. So the bachelor weekend is first and the girl is like, you have to tell me everything he does. And he's like, that like violates all of the rules of a bachelor party, but sure. And so he finds out some stuff. The husband gets mad and is like, you can't tell her, even though nothing bad actually happened. It's just like normal stuff. And then she's like, okay, now I have to do something crazy at mine, but you can't be there. It's, it's, it's like a whole thing. And everyone in this book honestly sucks. I gave it three out of five. Or no, I gave it four out of five. Looking at my paper, I gave it four out of five. He is the only normal character in this book. Everyone else sucks. Like they go with the first piece of information and they don't wait to hear anyone else's side of the story before they make a conclusion as to what's going on. And then they are mad at him for doing the things that they asked him to do, like tell him everything. So he's great, everyone else sucked. Then I read a Frida McFadden that I hadn't read and there's not many of hers that I haven't read. The Coworker, I gave it four stars. Everyone in this book also sucks. <laughs> Like literally everyone in this book sucks. Not one of my favorite Frida McFadden's, but I'm always gonna read a good Frida McFadden. And then I, <laughs> oh God, I read Pucking Ever After volumes one and two and I did go ahead and order Pucking Wild, the one with the new chapters. I've not read it. So I went ahead and ordered like the deluxe version that'll be here in March, but they're so cute. They're so cute. They're so cute. Like you get, um, Tomas and Jamie's births in these books. Well, I guess you get Jamie's birth in the other one, but you get like stuff from his birth in this one. You get Caleb and Mars. You get more Caleb and Jake. You get more, well, I guess Rachel's not as horny in these. Hmm. Fucking Robert Tussin. I don't know why this shit got me lazy right now, yeah. You don't read it for the smut, you read it for the story. <laughs> yeah, no, I, hate rereading books it's just not something that i do but i have reread pucking what was it called pucking ever pucking wild and pucking ever after volumes one and two three times each and i don't deface any of my books and i marked all of my favorite chapters let, let, let's 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 go to one. Oh, the emergency contact chapter that's so cute jake's all sad that nobody made him his emergency contact and then they have this whole argument of how he called Mars his best friend and Caleb got like really mad. And he's like, but you're my husband. And Caleb's like, I don't care, I'm your best friend too. And it was a whole thing and I thought it was super cute. It gets real dirty real fast. Daddy's favorite. But the beginning of that chapter is super cute, but I gave these both a four to five. And then <laughs> I finished the L. Kennedy hockey romance series. Is it gonna focus? There we go. Yeah. I. Well, let's talk about it. I love the first one. I did a whole video on that and you can click up here to watch it. You can also see me read pucking. I want to call it pucking, pucking around for the first time. And I have it right here, the deal. So funny, so just, I, I loved it. And like you would think by repeating the same formula for the other four books would work. It does not. So the second book is Dean. No, it's Logan. It's John Logan. This one's not half bad. Logan and Grace. Cause you have that whole like freshman situation, but she's also 10 times more mature than him. So I love that part. And then you get to Dean's book and Dean's the slutty one. So it's like, oh, it's gonna be funny because he's gonna learn to only wanna be with one person, right? Sure, great. And then you get to the pregnancy book where I'm just like, oh God, there's just so much happening. And then the legacy has snippets from all of them. And I just stopped caring. <laughs> Clap if you care. All right, let's move on. Perfect. Like I stopped caring around Dean's book. Like I'm gonna be really honest with you. 
I gave the school, the mistake, the score, and the goal all four stars, and I gave the legacy three stars. Yeah, I got bored, and I never thought I would ever say I'd get bored of a hockey romance series. We're just gonna totally ignore the fact that I forgot to include If There Be Thorns in this one. Also, three stars. Then I listened to Seeds of Yesterday. Last year, I talked about listening to a bunch of the books that I couldn't physically read, and I'm going to physically read a lot of the books that I had trouble listening to. And so I finished Flowers in the Attic finally. Yeah, Seeds of Yesterday, three stars. It is definitely easier to listen to than to read, but it is just so bizarre. Like you read a couple chapters and you have to stop because now it's back in Kathy's perspective, okay? And it's just, and I hate Melody. I hate her in the film and I hate her more in the book. Ugh. Then I read The Quiet Tenant by, I'm gonna butcher her name, Clemence McCallan. Uh, Keely from Ink Drinkers Anonymous recommended this and I read every book she recommends for me. I did enjoy how it was in third person omniscient, but I didn't like the changing of the timelines. I got confused as to who um, Rachel really was. Um, I thought she was Emily. I think that's her name, the bartender. And obviously that's the whole point is supposed to confuse you, but I didn't actually realize it was in the same timeline. So. I gave it three stars. Then I read another Keely recommendation, The Butcher and The Red, and I gave it four stars. It's kind of like Saw meets like Bones, the TV show. I liked lots of it and then some of it I didn't love, but overall I really did enjoy it. I don't think Keely enjoyed it. I think her Goodreads review was pretty bad of this, but I enjoyed it. Then I read One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston because everyone's read or seen the movie Red White World Blue at this point. Um, I thought I was gonna love it and I gave it three stars. I love the characters, but it is so long for the content that you're getting. Like, could have been summed up in this amount of pages. It got boring after a while and I all I wanted was just for the two characters to be able to be together. And there was just so much happening. And the fact that it all took place on the train, honestly, I forgot where they were half the time. Like, I'm not gonna- I'm like, wait, are they still on the train? <laughs> I will read any Casey McQuiston because queer romance is my life. And I wish I had it with me. My one five star book from January was No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. I gave it to one of my coworkers to borrow, so hope she likes it. But that book is crazy. It's the first book of the month book I've ever gotten. And oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. So many twists and turns. Again, it was in third person omniscient, so I was able to speed read through it. But there is a part at the end of the book where because it's third person omniscient, you're learning in real time what's happening. And so once, you know, the killer reveals that they're the killer, they kiss the main character on the head and they're like, no one can know. And I literally got the chills. <laughs> you have to read it. And then the last book I read was The Strawberry Shortcake Murder by Joanne Fluke. I'm doing a video right now um, where I read my mother's books. And this was one of the books I had to read. I did not get to the other one in the month of January, or if I do, it'll be after I do this video and I want it to come out before we get really into February. So if I happen to finish it before this video goes live, I'll put my thoughts in the description, but that's what I read in January. I don't plan on doing a big every book I read this year because that was a really long video and it took a lot of work. So I think I'm gonna separate it out by month and then maybe do the best two or three books from that month for my end of the year video. But hope you liked it. Hope you'll stick around. Go read a book or something.